Hey, what is going on, everybody? It is your boy Hobo here today, and as you can see, we are playing Madden NFL 19 Return to a little bit of familiarity for you guys who watched earlier in the season. This is what my videos normally look like for predictions. And, of course, as I just spoiled, it is Week 10 predictions here in the NFL. I am using the New Orleans Saints because of the big signing. The Saints, dr not drafted, why was I going to say drafted? The Saints signed free agent wide receiver Des Bryant to a one-year, I believe, a vet minimum contract. And I'm just excited about it. I own a Des Bryant jersey, and I'm a Giants fan, and it's a Cowboys jersey, so I don't know what you want to say to me about that, but let's get this thing kick-started Thursday, November 8th, Fox, 8.20 p.m. It's the Carolina Panthers at 6-2, taking on the 5-2-1 Pittsburgh Steelers. So, Roethlisberger, Ben Roethlisberger, is at a 15-3 record on primetime since 2014. That's a lot of primetime games. I don't know why. We keep putting the Steelers in prime time. Nonetheless, uh, the Panthers are 6-2. and two, Steelers 5-2-1. and one. Both these teams are on an upswing. I think the Panthers have that kind of knack to win close games late. And I, I like them a lot more than I like the Steelers, obviously. Uh, if you guys know me. Oh, there's a fumble. You know, I don't like the Steelers very much. So I'm going to take the Panthers in this game. I just think they're a better unit. And I think they'll walk away with a dub here on Thursday Night Football. Next up, November 11th, it'll be the Lions at 3-5 and five and the Bears at 5-3. and three. The Lions have won 9 of the last 10 against the Bears. And the thing about these two teams are they're completely different than the, the previous Lions and the previous Bears teams Excuse me, we've seen over the past few years. And as I've been saying, pretty much since week one, I, I really think the Bears have hit the next level and I think that defense is legit their offense is super legit they can score from pretty much anywhere they can run the ball on you they can throw the ball to the running backs they can pass the ball unlike me here in Madden um, but it's a it's gonna be a fun game and I do think the Bears are a much better team than the Lions at this juncture even though the Lions as we all know did beat the uh, New Orleans, or not New Orleans Saints, they beat the New England Patriots, and that's no easy feat, and they did it as I run this fake punt for nothing. Eli Apple, what a great man. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to take the Bears in this game. I just think they're a much better unit, and I think that um, they'll turn things around in their series with the Lions, and they'll go to 6-3 and three and start looking towards the postseason, surprised to say. Next up. This game that you're watching me play right now on Fox, it's the New Orleans Saints at the Cincinnati Bengals. That's one big reason why I like the Saints in this game. Their defense, legitimate. Of course, everybody roasted them for the first few weeks. This Saints defense was a fluke last year. But, um, you know, I think that they just had to take some time to find their groove. And they, they have, for the most part. They are not a bad uh, unit there on defense and their offense. It's just getting better, and the only reason why that was a fumble is because we're playing an arcade. But, um, and their offense is just getting better, you know. Actually, I'm going to sub in Des Bryant right now so I can use him a little bit more because he's way down there for some reason on the depth chart. Michael Thomas, I don't know why you're not starting. I guess, I don't know. It's weird. Whatever, that's what I like to see. We're going to have Dez play a little bit in this game just so I can use him. And he's one of the big reasons why I like the Saints in this game. There he is. You see him out there, slow, no hands, Des Bryant. But with Drew Brees throwing you the football, we saw what he could do with Tony Romo. Right there, dropped the football. But we saw what he, what he could do with Tony Romo, who was a good, decent Pro Bowl quarterback. Obviously not a playoff winning quarterback, but he was uh, a quarterback. He was actually fairly above average, and I do have a lot of respect for Tony Romo now that he's retired, of course, but... Either way, the Bengals, I think, at 5-3 and three are no no slouch themselves. They've lost some close games, but they, they're by no means a bad team. And I think that they have what it takes to beat the Saints in this game. But, I mean, the Saints are so unbelievably impressive. Like, they beat the Rams last week. That's just incredible. And not only did they beat the Rams, they beat the Rams by two scores. 
And that you you got to say something about the the, the Saints team. It's seven and one, easily one of the best in the entire league. It's them and Kansas City and uh, <clears throat> I almost said St. Louis, um, Los Angeles, the Rams as the the best teams in the league. And I really hope the Saints make it to the postseason and go far because <laughs> really they're just a, a good football team and I like to watch good football. But I do think they're better than the Bengals, and I'm going to give this one to the Cincinnati... Oh, excuse me. That's not what I meant to say. I'm going to give this one to the Saints just because I think they're a lot better uh, than the Bengals. But the Bengals aren't bad, and just because their record's going to say 5-4 and four doesn't mean I don't think they can sneak into the playoffs. And I think the Saints will make it to 8-1, and one, and um, they'll start silencing some doubters. So next up, it'll be the Falcons at 4-4, four and four, the Browns at 2-6-1, and one. And I think the Falcons are just going to walk all over this Browns defense because the Falcons offense is so lethal. They demolished the number one offense and, or excuse me, the number one defense in football last week in the Cincinnati Redskins. They, the Cincinnati Redskins, the Washington Redskins, they absolutely walked all over the Redskins. And it, it just, it wasn't even fun. <laughs> it was just, you know, methodical, brutal, beating down the number one defense in football and that's insanity because they were able to run the football against the best defense in the league who prior to that held Christian McCaffrey, Ezekiel Elliott, and Saquon Barkley all to minus uh, 35 yards I believe in each of their respective games and that's impressive those are three of the best backs in the league so I, I really um, I really think that the Falcons you know they are a force on offense even though we all made the jokes in week one about the red zone inefficiency and Steve Sarkeesian, and I think they've gotten a lot better since then, and it's going to show in this game. I mean, not by much, because you're playing the Browns, but I, I, I still think the Browns are improving, but until they get a new offensive coordinator who's not afraid to dial up some creative plays and let Baker Mayfield kind of utilize his full skill set more, then I think they're just going to be... Um, continuing at least to be a joke, but you know I, I am impressed with what I've seen from the Browns, seen from the Browns so far this year, and the Falcons' defense is starting to get healthy, and they're starting to get a little bit better. They just added a brand new piece to their defense. I'm trying to remember his name, and I'm sorry, but I can't. Um, I really wish I could remember his name, but I, I can't, and I apologize. But it's I I really like <laughs> oh Bruce Irvin, sorry. It just popped in my head. Bruce Irvin added to that Falcons defense, and I like them in this game. I think they're going to get a, a good, solid victory against the Browns. Next up, it'll be the Jaguars at 3-5 and five and the Colts at 3-5. and five. And At the beginning of the season, you'd have looked at this game like, holy smokes, the Jaguars are just going to walk all over the Colts. It's not even going to be close. But both of these teams are relative jokes. The Jaguars have devolved from the best defense in football to a sneaky good offense into a joke. And that's kind of pathetic. They have uh, the Josh Norman of the AFC, Mr. Jalen Ramsey. He talks all this big game, but, you know, he had one good year, and now everybody thinks he's the best, but really he's average at best. And I, that sucks to say because I like Jalen Ramsey. I like his trash talk. But he's just not very good, and neither are the Jaguars. The Colts, I'm going to give this game to the Colts, surprisingly. I just think they're going to be able to muster more offense than Blake Bortles and company can. So I'll take the Colts in this game. It'll be interesting to see as Mante Teo gets that interception. Uh, Andy Dalton was throwing to Mante Teo's girlfriend. Absolutely nobody, and Mante made a great play. But, yeah, I'm going to take the Colts in this game. Andrew Luck is 6-2 and two against the Jags all time. And I think that he'll roll them in this game, go to 7 and whatever, 7 and 2. Michael Thomas, that's unbelievable. Oh, there we go, touchdown. Maybe, nope. But uh, on CBS, the next game is the 2 and 6 Cardinals against the 8 and 1 Chiefs. This game shouldn't even be close. I'm going to take the Chiefs in a route. Next up on CBS, it'll be the Bills and the Jets, 2 and 7 Bills, 3 and 6 Jets. Sam Darnold in a boot, will not play in this game. So I'm gonna take uh, I'll, 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 <laughs> I'm gonna take the Jets in this game, uh, even without Sam Darnold. I just think that the Brown or the Browns, the Bills are way too bad to even attempt to trust with anything. I know they got that big shock win over the 
the Vikings, but the Vikings have relatively bounced back from that, so. Yeah, I'm going to take the Jets in this game. Next up on Fox, it'll be the 5-3 and three Redskins, the 3-5 and five Buccaneers. Uh, and six of the last eight times these two teams have met, the games have been, uh, been decided by three or fewer points. That's pretty impressive, and I hope we get a good game like that on Sunday afternoon. But uh, I think the Redskins' number one defense will bounce back from getting absolutely washed, and they'll murder whoever's playing quarterback for the Buccaneers, whether it's Jameis Winston or Ryan Fitzpatrick or my grandmother. Um, they'll probably win this game by multiple scores, so I'll take the Redskins. Next up on CBS is the Patriots at 7-2 and, and the Titans at 4-4. Four and four. And the Titans offense uh, kind of found itself a little bit on, on Monday night against the Cowboys. And they're going to need that kind of showing in double because in the uh, AFC Divisional Round game last year, these Titans got murdered by the Patriots. And if they don't want a repeat of that, they're going to have to play their best football. And we say that all the time when you play the Patriots. You have to play your best football. So uh, this Titans defense is really going to have to play their best game of the year. And um, I think that they're capable of doing it for sure. But I'm not going to pick them in this game. I'll take the Patriots to, keep, to continue rolling through the month of November. As much as I hate to say it, but uh, I just I can't pick the Titans in this game. I'm sorry, and uh, we're gonna go with the Patriots. Next up on Fox, we have the six and two L.A. Chargers against the one and seven Oakland Raiders. This game is not gonna be close. The Chargers are probably gonna score 77 like Clemson did last week. All rise. No, what am I saying? Um. Either way, where was I? Oh yeah, this Chargers offense is pretty damn good. So I'm gonna take the Chargers in this game, and I don't think the I don't think the Raiders have a shot. I really don't. And that's kind of sad to say, because at the beginning of the year, you know, I thought the Raiders would be a sleeper wild card team in the AFC, but now they're a joke. So I'm gonna take the Chargers. Next up on CBS. 425 the five and four Dolphins with a winning record versus a three four and one Aaron Rodgers led Green Bay Packers who have a losing record unbelievable Aaron Rodgers has won 11 straight home games including the playoffs so I'm gonna take the Packers in this game even though they're struggling they are and if they don't win this game then I think Mike McCarthy's gonna be on the hot seat and with good reason because their offense stinks, and they have the best quarterback in the world playing football, and their offense is atrocious. They've got nobody and a box of crackers playing wide receiver, a bunch of mediocre running backs, and an offensive line that can't pass block to save its life with the best quarterback in the world playing football. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But I'm going to take the Packers in this game. I think the Dolphins are a good team. I don't necessarily think they're 5-4. and four. Especially after when they drop four straight. So, yeah, uh, come back to me with some real evidence as to why the Dolphins are a good team. They played four good teams and they lost four good times. That didn't make any sense. But they played a bunch of subpar teams and came away with five wins. So, good for them. Good for Des Bryant with that catch there. That's impressive, I guess, on arcade. But um, <laughs> I'm going to take the Packers in this game. Next up, it'll be the 4-4 four four Seahawks against the 8-1 Rams. Excuse me. And Russell Wilson has seven losses against the Rams in his career. That's the most losses for him against any opponent. And I feel like the Rams are going to kind of recover from their thrashing down in New Orleans. And they'll uh, bounce back big. And they'll beat the Seahawks in a close game because, you know, these two teams always play each other hard. The Seahawks have found a little bit of footing. But I don't think they're good enough. Not even close to good enough. Excuse me to play. The, oh, excuse me to play the Rams. That was weird. But I'm going to take L.A. in this game, and um, I'm going to take them in confidence. Next up, it'll be the Cowboys and the Eagles, 3-5 and five, Dallas, 4-4 four and four, Philly. So Ezekiel Elliott, Mr. No Name himself, has been stuffed, stymied, pushed backwards, ridiculously held to mediocre stats throughout most of the season. Unless he's facing the Giants, but, you know, we're the Giants, so what do you want? But yeah, um, 
the cowboys are really, 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 really bad. Like, they're a joke bad. Throw up the X, they're terribly bad. How convenient I start talking about the Cowboys as I throw a touchdown pass to Des Bryant. Good for me. But the Eagles, I don't think they're anything special. For sure not anything special. I know we're only halfway ish through the season and they're they're sitting at five hundred, four and four. Excuse me, I just yawned. I don't know why I did that. But it's gonna take a Herculean effort for them to bounce back. I know they have Golden Tate. I know they're getting a little healthier. But it's going to take a lot for them to kind of fix their struggles and get back to the postseason and repeat as Super Bowl champions, which I don't think they will, by the way. There's too many great teams in the NFC that the Eagles cannot beat. But I'm going to take the Eagles in this game because the Cowboys are just so laughably bad. Next, Monday, November 12th. It'll be the last game of Week 10. This is a, probably the best game they could have put in a primetime slot in Monday Night Football. But in typical ESPN Monday Night Football fashion, they get the 1-7 Giants visiting the 2-7 49ers. So Odell Beckham Jr. gets to face Richard Sherman again. And every time they've played, Odell Beckham Jr. has made Richard Sherman look slightly ridiculous. And that's a testament to A, how bad Richard Sherman is getting, and B, how good Odell Beckham is. But um, Odell Beckham probably won't get any targets because Eli Manning's old 50,000-year-old ass is going to be cemented into the 49ers field. I don't even know, like, I can't muster proper language to articulate how pissed off I am with the Giants that they're going to allow that joke of a man to continue to play quarterback for this team. It's, it's a joke. It really is. And uh, the 49ers, Nick Mullins, is hot. He's great. He's awesome. And I know it's only one game, but I really like me some Nick Mullins. And I think he's going to shred this 49ers defense. And guys, here's a fantasy tip. If you're struggling at quarterback, say you drafted Blake Bortles number one overall. Go out and get Nick Mullins. Start him. He'll have 50 points. I swear on my life. He, the 49ers are going to shred this Giants defense like Swiss cheese. And it's not even going to taste like Swiss cheese. It's going to taste like Swiss ass gonna be awful this game's gonna be sloppy it's gonna be messy it's gonna be terrible it's gonna be like two weeks ago when the Giants last played on Monday Night Football and got routed they'll get routed again I'm taking the 49ers in this game because the Giants are laughably terrible they're the worst team in professional sports at the moment and the 49ers are at least on the rise and that's pathetic so I'm gonna take the 49ers in this game and guys that rounds out my week 10 predictions as we round out this game with a 28 to 0 lead before the two minute warning in the first half and that's where i'm gonna end this video so i hope you guys enjoyed if you did drop a comment down below leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button if you want more content like this that's gonna do it for me your boy hobo and i'll catch you guys right back again next week for week 11 predictions until next time see you guys later